Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is August 10th, 2021. I'm Bryce Castillo, your great night pre-show slash green room navigator. We're going to join the fellas in the green room in just a moment. Uh, a little bit of uh, what we got coming up for you today on the show. Oh, we got a good one. We got, uh, we should have done this last week because it would have been our sixth episode, but uh, we've got a new round of news six, bum, 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 the news that's six. So that's gonna be fun. Of course, uh, when C. Robert Cargo will be joining us, and if you uh, missed it, we will have some musical accompaniment uh, by our friend uh, uh, Joe Mo. When when Joe Mo uh, is gonna be joining us, he's uh he's gonna be a lot of fun. That's gonna be a lot of fun. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Hello. Uh, before we get started, a couple of other things. Uh, Chord Killers, make sure you join us on Chord Killers. You know, we're, we're about to start Star Trek Lower Decks and for the next couple of weeks, because we didn't realize Rick and Morty was going to take a month off, we're going to do Marvel's What If series. So if you want to uh, hear Tom Merritt and Brian and myself talk a little bit about those shows alongside, uh, what's the other show that we're doing right now? The other show, it's a... Uh, we're doing uh, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's probably not even good. Uh, <laughs> no, it's going to be fine. Um, so uh, please tune in for that. Courtkillers.com. Weird Things was great uh, this week as well. In fact, it's going to tie in a little bit to our game. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, we've got a lot of people joining us here in the audience today. But uh, we are going to uh, uh, take you directly into the Great Night Green Room. Uh, uh, joining right now. Hello, green room. Can you hear me? Yes, we can Yo. hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, no, no, you Fantastic. All right. Just moved. Uh, well, that's uh, funny. but uh, yeah, yeah. That's here. why I'm looking back. But he's he's making sorry. Words. Here's your here's your green room. Uh, hey, uh, you're on. Hi. Hello. Hey, everyone. Yo. And uh, we're live. Hello, beautiful people. I'm Brian Brushwood, joined as always by uh, C. Robert Cargill and uh, uh, Brett Weaver. Um. Uh, Hello, everyone. Which one of you is more important? Uh, I mean, it's me, right? Yeah. Mm. I mean, right? I mean, it depends only, on who it is. To my dog, look, right now. I'd just like to say, to my dog, I'm the most important. All I'm saying is, he's the guy with the clipboard, and the guy with the clipboard is never the most important. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's always the most important person. Oh. The person with the clipboard. <laughs> carry a clipboard at all times <laughs> yeah. uh what is the biggest surprise that either of you have encountered uh on set like 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 oh my god apparently that matters and it shouldn't oh uh, uh, something that oh geez um that's hmm. uh for me was uh was uh Realizing that the crew usually gets to eat first. I was actually going to say the, the the I guess the biggest surprise is how tied to the morale of a production the quality of food is. Absolutely. That I've been on sets with amazing food and I've been on sets with really mediocre food. And the difference in the crew is night and day. Like the crew grumbles, yada, yada. They get good food. They're over the moon. They're happy about it. Mm -hmm. They're great. Uh, I was on one production where... Um, even though we were in London, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the head cook was uh, from Austin. And so every morning I'd go up and, and he'd be like, what do you want, Cargill? I'm like, you know what I want. I want a steak and egg breakfast burrito. He's like, done. <laughs> and then all these Brit crew members around me are just like, what, what's a breakfast burrito? Boy, <laughs> what, is, what is And they keep, would come up to me and very politely but sheepishly be like, what is a breakfast burrito? And it's like, oh, it's breakfast wrapped in a tortilla. It's wonderful. You can, ha, he makes the best ones. It's, it's, it's some of the best burritos I've had at, uh, from my own town. And so they were like, okay, so by the end, Every morning, you'd see half a dozen to a dozen Brits chowing down on breakfast burritos. So I have kind of seeded London with the love of the uh, uh, of the burritos. Since we, I just found out that we both lived in. Well, I still live, and you lived in my neighborhood. Oh yeah, no, I lived in that neighborhood for ten years. Uh, when did you stop living there? Uh, three years ago. So then you know about Tierra Linda and the taco. Breakfast taco place that's at the gas station. Yeah. 
That place is the best. Yes, yeah. No, the thing is, is that the neighborhood that he lives in has so much great food walking distance. Yes. Um, and uh, and that would that would actually be the thing is you know I'd be up late writing and then I'd be like okay I'm done writing I'm uh, gonna have a whiskey or two and I get a good buzz on and it's like all right I'm gonna stagger down and get some breakfast burritos mm-hmm. and walk down and get some breakfast burritos walk home with a full belly pass out happy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good neighborhood for that. Yes. And you can walk to a draft house. Yes, me and my wife used to do that I all have. the time. <laughs> uh, uh, one of my favorite movie nights ever. We uh, was the night that um, uh, uh, that Fast and Furious Seven came out, and we were like, "All right, we're doing this up. We're doing it family." I got a six pack of Corona. We grilled up steaks and had a uh, had a couple beers, and then walked to the movie theater, watched the movie, had a blast, walked home. It was a beautiful night. It was just great. Yeah, no, I miss uh, I I. What I really miss about that neighborhood is just how walkable it is to everything yep. and how much quality is there. Yes. I, I, I love living in the neighborhood that I live in now. It's great. It's I can I can walk to my one of my favorite restaurants and I can walk to my liquor store. And that is uh, that, that is the extent of my walking ability. Yes. So uh, uh, how um, maybe this is an indication of, of, of how uncomfortable I am. But, but like, being on the road all the, all the time afforded, among other things, the ability to always be a fresh face that showed up and vanished over and over and over and over mm-hmm. again. Um, now I live in a town where the same face shows up again and again. Are you talking to me? I'm right here. You can just right. say... <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a shared experience, Oh yes, right? Yes, yes. How do you get past that? Of seeing the same face? Yeah. Of, of, of like letting, like to me. I mean, we, not, we're no, both nothing, married. So, I mean. Nothing upset me learned. more than the first time I went to go to uh, Torchy's or whatever. And somebody said, oh, the usual. And realizing, oh, my God, I have the usual. You have the usual. I hated myself. You hated yourself because Why? of that? Yes. Yes. Oh, God. That's, that's the I don't want to have a usual. Motherfucker, I'm, you're Norm. Yeah, let me own being norm. Let me share something with you. Uh, when I lived in Houston in the Montrose area, there was a place called Ming's, uh, fantastic uh, Chinese Americanized Chinese food. And uh, and uh, the guy Fay that owned the place, we got to know each other because I would always go in and I would get this spicy crawfish fried rice. That would that was always the thing. He knew after about four or five times that I'd been there that I always get the spicy crawfish fried rice, three three uh, peppers, right? That heat, and the and then seventh you time, killed yourself. The seventh time that I went there, he said, "You're not eating that. You're not going to have that. You've eaten that too much. You need to try something else." And and because I was a regular. He said, I just so happened to get, to get some fiddlehead ferns, and I'm going to make some fiddlehead ferns with, uh, with uh, fresh beef, like the bolaklak, the, the shaken beef with garlic. He made this amazing meal for me, charged me the same, because I'm a regular. First of all, I want to say that Fiddlehead Fern sounds like a character from a novel. Yes. Um, but uh, no, good old it, Fiddlehead Fern. Dude, I, I mean that's the thing is it's it's I I I waited tables for about five years, so I tip like a mofo. Yep. Um, but part of the reason I do that is I'm not just tipping for the service I just got. I'm tipping for service next time. And so there's certain restaurants I go to that the waiters see me and Jess walk in, and they poach us, and they're like, "Oh, I'll take care of that person." Mm-hmm. And then you get amazing service from someone who wants to wait on you because they know you're going to take care of them and they're going to take care of you and it is a wonderful experience i my indian restaurant uh, had something similar to that uh my indian restaurant knows me apparently cargill in uh uh in middle india is kind of slang for something and it's something mm-hmm. cool but uh but so she always laughs every time she sees my name come across because she thinks it's an indian word and um, and I'm convinced that it's it's sl- slipped in there because of 
Cargill, the agriculture company, and that it picked up this through there. Sure. But so, um, so she started talking to me about my name regularly. But so she got to know me as a regular. And like the other day, I was in. She was like, "Is everything okay? We you ordered very different things than you guys normally order." I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we just we we decided we wanted to have a a time where we just tried." The things we haven't had in a long time. She goes, okay, good. So I was worried that we had screwed something up last time. Um, like it's no, this is this is it's 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 adulting properly, my man. It is it is getting. There are so many benefits to people knowing what your usual is. Yes, I understand in theory everything you're saying, but also it's like I don't want anybody to have my number. Like like that's my d- deepest oh, fear. Oh, is no. is is like I love being a, a rock skipping across the the lake. Sure, you I can be both. I. When you, I, you can do both. When I'm done with this life, if I have a secret left, I have fucking failed. Like, I, I, I am fine with everybody knowing exactly who I was, uh, and, uh, and I'm down with that. Uh, and I, I, I like the people that I, you know, people have in my number and being like, ah, yes, I know what you'd like. Uh, can I get you this? I used to, that used to be a thing of mine uh, in my youth, too, where uh, I would go to a lot of the same coffee shops, and um, they would walk up with a glass of water and a black coffee. And then they would ask the rest of the table what you, what you would like to... Murphy's seen it in action, actually. Right. Uh, you know, he's actually seen it where they'll come up and bring me the drinks, and they'll they, everybody looks around like, where's our... And they're like, oh, we haven't ordered yet. And they're like, dear God, they know you. And it's like, yes, they do. So... Am, am I the only one who feels this or or like uh, 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 there's part of me that understands the appeal of it like you know I go to Hat Creek and in the morning everyone says Brian like Norm <laughs> and you're cheers. like stop talking to me <laughs> no, 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 no. you don't know me but but my, my favorite thing is that you know it, it, it'll be a, a bacon egg and cheese burrito and all that stuff, and then also a, 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 a fresh coast IPA, and then they go, and then they grab the thing, and they forgot to remove the cheap chops from it. The balls. Yep, and it goes spraying everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's balls. like you got a couple. I love yeah. it. I love all of that, but 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 also it's like I don't know. I I think to myself like, is this it? Is this what life is? It's one of the things. Sometimes you want to go where everybody where knows, knows your, your name. name. Where everybody... And uh, they're, they're glad yeah. you came. And they're came. always glad you came. Yes. 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 That's okay. the key. Fair enough. Fair enough. What you don't want to be, what you absolutely don't want to be is, oh, it's that fucking guy. Yeah. I don't want to hear... You, you've got you to take the register because it's that fucking guy. How do you know if you're that guy? You, you, oh, you, you, know. you No, no, no. You never no, no, no. know. You How never know if you're you that know? guy because those people are not self-aware enough to know. That's true. We literally if have If you a are name. that guy, you don't know. Yeah. It's, it's Karen and Kevin. Like, everybody, you know, every, you don't want to be that person. Right. But you're not that person. Right. You're Brian. Yeah. And they grab you your drink and they grab you your uh-huh. burrito. And w- it's less work you got to fucking do, brother. Like, I'm all about it. If you want to become unknown, don't tip. Be a dick. Uh, to bring your order back in. Demand your steak be burned. You, you know You'll what? become that guy pretty quickly. You know what? We, we're not going to say the name out loud, but you and I were talking about someone a little bit ago yes. who was famous all over town for not tipping at all. Wow. And uh, uh, and just everybody knew, and his friend, it was a friend of mine, and everybody say knew. Say it on three, three, two, one. George W. Bush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it was It was my old pal W. Yeah. Uh, no, but but the yes. thing is, is you, you could, you know, you, you'd you see the disdain on people's faces oh, yeah. when, like, when uh, he sat in their section because it's like, oh, fuck, I'm gonna, th- that guy's going to make me work, and then I'm not going to get any money. Basketball player Ralph Sampson of the Houston Rockets was a known horrible, horrible tipper. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the people he tipped horribly. No, it's ba- it's yeah. That's the most insulting thing. Like as a waiter, I had that happen once, and I had I've seen other people have it happen where somebody famous sits down and they've got a lot of people and it's a big table uh-huh. and everybody's drinking and then they leave you three dollars. Oh yeah, and it's like oh fuck this guy. Like I know for a fact that guy just signed a twenty million dollar right. deal and he left me three dollars yeah. after I worked my ass off for him. And yep. then you get you you run into the celebrities who are the nicest, sweetest people, and yes. then. Like leave insane tips, and you're like, 
Oh my! Like I almost need to give some of this back because this makes me feel guilty. <laughs> I, I once one of my one of my best tippers ever was a guy named Emilio who was a famous Tejano artist. I was waiting tables in San Antonio, and I didn't recognize him, but a bunch of the staff did, and they're like, "Do you know who that is in your set?" I was like, "No," and they're like, "That's Emilio," and I was like, "Wait, like the because I was familiar with him, I just right. didn't recognize him." And yeah, and we, super chill, super cool. Let me a hundred dollar tip on you know just a meal for four people, nice. and I was just like. Oh, that's fucking baller. Like that's that's how you treat people. Yep. And uh, and so from there on, that's that's the kind of tipper that I became. Where I was just like, nope, I'm taking care of everybody. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm right. gonna be this guy. Yeah. Every tip is a press release from from them forward. Yes. Yeah. All right. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, somebody earlier said that they uh, wa- uh, they get to walk to the Alamo Draft House Village. Yes. Literally, the one we're talking about. Yeah, that's that was the, the one we're talking about. That was the neighborhood I used to live in. Love that neighborhood. Been there for almost twenty years. Then we lived there at the same exact yeah, we time. Did. We just didn't run into each other. Yeah, we did. Maybe we ran into each other in July of 2016 when all of us were out and about in the neighborhood playing uh, Pokemon Go. Um, Possibly. <laughs> well, but I was going, I was going to, round, to, to Round Rock because downtown was within, like, turning distance was five different stops that you could, you could just walk a half block. Oh, the, the church in the center of Wooten had five different stops. Oh, that's right. Church and Park. Oh, right. Hello. Hey! Hello. What is up, Bryce Castillo? Hi. Uh, I got new wheels. Yeah? I got new wheels. We talked about this on the bonus last week. Remember? Yeah. Uh, are they on a car? They are on a car. Okay. Thankfully, they just put them on the sure. car now. They put them on the car now. He was like, here they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I ended up getting a Honda Civic. Nice. I ended up getting a 2012, 2012 Honda Civic. So what was the deciding factor? Uh, speed. Uh, rather, he was taking it. Speed. Not, not, not the car. <laughs> he, he was on it. <laughs> he was up for How three days. He's like, I just really want to get this car right now. No, that that is it. Was I? Because when I got that Avenger that just broke down, I I needed to get a new car real quick. So that was that was the deciding factor. Is what is the best car in my pre-approved price range yes. that I can get right now? Right now, <laughs> and so there was a there's a, a very good Civic right so by me. Oh, how fast does it go? Not very fast. Oh, okay, because it's a Honda Civic. <laughs> how fast does it go? <laughs> Not fast. Does it go? Does it go fast? Yeah, that, that's the only thing I miss on that Avenger was it was a V6 trim, so it had a real engine in it and not the little. To make you feel any better, uh, you can you your car could beat my car easily. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. My Jeep is just not. Mm. It doesn't. Now, it doesn't. if I was in my Hyundai, yeah, not nah, smoke yet. But <laughs> I, I bet. Yeah. yeah. It's now. Yeah. Hold on. Your Jeep is uh, what? Eighty four? Uh, no, it's a two thousand one. Okay. Four cylinder. Right. Okay. What's wrong with that? Uh, uh, it. Ha- I can drive over everything. Yeah. But from getting up and go from a stoplight, it's not as fast. Okay, on an average day, how many people wave at Bryce versus wave at you? Mm-hmm. Oh, a That's lot a less. Well, it depends on what neighborhood he's in because they might know him <laughs> and they just wave and that's a different that classic thing where you drive through the neighborhood and, people and they're like the hey, hey 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 yeah but i mean the jeep wave yeah do, jeep. do you get the jeep wave i do get the jeep wave. okay I... except people with newer cars like the douche jeeps that are out there douche jeeps yeah douche jeeps you see now I'm, now i know you've got uh, yours is a 2000 Seven twelve, two thousand twelve. Okay, yeah. but the uh, well, the douche jeeps are the four door Wranglers that don't have four wheel drive. Two door. Okay, go on. Yeah. Okay, but but the four door that don't have all wheel drive. Hmm. Those are the douche jeeps because then they're that's, just. That's the only delineating factor is that it has they four doors. It's because and, and they don't would, do their original job. You would intentionally not. Give them the wave. Ooh. No, I'm saying they don't wave. They won't wave. They don't wave. I always so it's wave. it's their fault. Yes. They, they asked for it. Yes. Wow. Wow. 
That's what I'm saying. I give them the way they don't give the way back. And then I'm like, fuck that guy. That's what I say. That is a TikTok I would subscribe And then I unzip the window, and I'm like, fuck you. And they're like, what? And then they actually driving off. You got to get one of the newer ones with the automatic zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Zip, zip, zip. They actually should do that. I don't know. Remember, remember the, uh, I don't know which cars had it, but the ones that had the automatic seatbelt, you'd sit in it, and you close it, and it would yeah for you. Have you seen those? It was like a hug. Something like that. It's like a 2001 thing, right? Right. I mean, nobody does it anymore. Yeah. But I, rem- I just Anybody remember that being remember a Y2K? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? That's how we stopped 9-11. <laughs> What's up so. with these parachute pants, eh? Have you had the food on the airlines lately? <laughs> Folks, it's not any good food. The food's not good. <laughs> So, uh, how, how, but, but you, you have you. you're having a pretty strong reaction to this someone in a jeep not giving the jeep wave. Yeah, uh, it, be, because there are like, rules, like, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm half tempted to wave at somebody who's in like a, I don't know, a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And sure, I'm half tempted a fake jeep to wave a faux jeep. That's okay. When I'm not even in in a jeep, <laughs> like like really, I, yeah, oh. you're waving at people in jeeps and you're not in a jeep. Right. Oh you, yeah. You can't do that. You're going to look like a crazy Well, person. no. People are just like, I don't, why are you, what do you want? Right. You're not my kin. You're, <laughs> you're in an Acura. Get out of here, Acura. <laughs> this is a Jeep thing. Or they're just thinking, oh, this person's so nice. Look, we're in Austin. They're waving yeah, at other us. Other people are here so nice here. I, I drive a Cyan XB. We just keep our heads down. <laughs> oh, man. I... I Still like those XBs. I like the. I, I like them. it. I love them. It looks cool. I don't know why. I like the boxy look. It, I mean, I did too at the time. I still, <laughs> I, I, I still do. It's just one of those things where I've gotten to that point. It's like, Cargill, why are you still driving the same car that you <laughs> bought 16 years ago? Like, y- you could afford to get a new car. Like, why don't you get a new car? And it's like, ah, uh, pandemic. Yeah. It's, a little, it's hmm. been a minute, though. I mean, like, you've had that car for. A bit. They've stopped making that car for uh, a they, long they, time. They, 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 Scion doesn't exist as a brand anymore. Right. It's gone. It's like we're That's no. That's true. It's totally That's gone. true. Yeah. <laughs> but I had my I had my first Jeep. I had from ninety nine to 2007, 16, 17? Yeah, sixteen, and then I sold it, mm-hmm. and I got this Jeep, which is a two thousand one. So do you wave, and to whom do you wave? I wave to anybody in a Jeep. Did you, you wave to me? Of course I would. Okay. This is some serious shit. Yes, we're, it's we're some going. serious shit. But, but I would only wave at you because I remember you, and you're a, you're a regular person in my life. No, so no. so you're saying you, you would you would jeep blind I was not you should wave at me because we are part of the same tribe. Yes. I was I was not aware that Jeep guy culture existed the way motorcycle culture existed. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like yeah. motorcycle and scooter aficionados when they pass each other. And there's a cousin thing with motorcycles and Jeeps as well. Well that's that's a little different. But yeah. You know, there there is those a kissing cousins. There, there's still a little wave with yeah. Jeeps and motorcycles too. Like a uh, bus driver, school bus drivers, they they wave at each other sure. too. You okay, know. what is the oldest vehicle that all four of us would trade in our current vehicle to just have? Like, like snap your fingers, we suddenly have an older vehicle, what would you take? 59 Corvette. Like, for me, it would be a, uh, uh, what's the, uh, uh, what's the... Speaking of the mic. El Dorado. The, the Wienermobile. El Camino. <laughs> El Camino. You know what? That was what El I Camino. thought, too. You know, that was exactly my first El thought. El Camino. I'm, yeah. I'm beating him by two years. I'm going to say 57 Chevy. Okay. Yeah. Hard top. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I don't... No, the, the El Camino. I think, I think like... That's I, a 72, okay. right? 72 El Camino. I know. It looks like a cool fucking car with a yeah. pickup back. What's like, the oldest car any of us have driven? Ooh. I think mine... <laughs> 66 like Dodge Dart. <laughs> Mine was a 72 Dodge Dart. Yeah, I, that's that how my, I learned how to drive. That was my first car. Was a 66 Dodge Dart, four door, straight six. There was a hole in the floor on the right side from where it rusted through, yes, bro. Because that happened in all of them. That's right. <laughs> okay, so quick poll: uh, How many yeah. of us have uh, experienced manual transmission? I do it every day. I used to. I used to drive a Jeep, Cherokee. Yeah. Right. Right. 
No? Pa- no. 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 Okay. I, okay. no, no for I, me. I, 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 that's the hardest thing for me to want to give up. Like, like, like the, the idea of a yeah. electric uh, Wrangler or whatever makes yes. me upset. Yeah. I totally agree. Even if there's just no need for like, it literally doesn't have a transmission in the same way of like a fully automatic. Just you, you got to have hands on a gear. I mean, you literally can feel the rest of the machine working. Yes. It's so awesome. The linkage. Sure. You can feel the yeah. linkage. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you're not just riding in a car. You're driving a car. Do they have a hybrid Jeep? Maybe that's that's something they, they, they could they, do. It's very they close. They do, but 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 it's only got it's like a, a dial. Jeep. It's that's like fine. forward, backward. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing is, is there's a very good reason they did away with manual transmission, and I get it. Yes, we miss it, but we're being old men right now. Yeah, I mean, fine. All the good old also, days when I had to do three extra steps at a stop sign. <laughs> I still do it. <laughs> so good. I still do it. I, 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 it's, it's, it's Greek to me. Manual transmission. I, just, I didn't, I didn't, you know, grow up learning it. Yeah, and it's you push in the to. clutch. Mm-hmm. You lay off. You, you shift and you lay off the brake. And as you, as you're, you hit the acceleration. You pull the thing, and you can feel it catch in the gear and then yep. you're good to go i mean mm. on top of everything it's sort of like an anti-theft device where it's just it is like, a little bit good luck <laughs> hope you know how i hope you know how to steal this uh g james b says my first car was a security question so he will not be giving up his information for free at this time <laughs> I, I i have not given up my first car but i out of curiosity what's the shittiest vehicle you own the thing that you hate that just every time you think about it you're like oh i fucking hated that thing i i well i got an answer for this All do right. it it was it was my first car it was that shitty suzuki forenza that i drove to texas in with a million miles on it, it did not, uh, of the, uh, it was four door, uh, of the four interior door handles, only one of them was not snapped oh, off no. because it was made out of just the shittiest plastic ever. Uh, I hated that car. That car fucking sucked. Dude, then there's a reason they don't make Suzuki cars anymore. Right. My shittiest car is my favorite car that we have right now. We have to insure it as a vintage car. Hmm. It's a uh, a, a Chevrolet, um, I don't know, uh, truck. Uh, it's 1990- They weren't naming the trucks back then. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a, a 1990 truck. Chevrolet truck, and it's awesome. You open it up, there's nothing in there except for like a carburetor. That's it. That's all you see. <laughs> my, mine was my 1980 Dodge Prost. Prospector van that was a conversion van had uh, shag carpeting on the ceiling. Oh my god, no AC. Oh. This was in Houston oh. yep. that I got, and I got it for singing at my cousin's wedding. I yes. sang at my cousin's yes. wedding, and and uh, and he he and brought you got me paid out, in van. He brought me out, and there was a '64. There was no, there was a '66 uh, uh, Ford uh, Mustang, and there was a 1980. Dodge Prospect Prospector van, you know the Pito vans, and uh, and he he goes, I really appreciate you singing at my wedding. I was like, thanks. And he said, pick one. <laughs> and I was like, really? He goes, yeah, pick one. And I said, take the Mustang. He said, pick another one. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I I have always wanted a conversion van, and uh, I reached that point where I was like, you know what? I can afford to get a a, a conversion van, mm. and I talked to Jess, and I said, "You know what? I want to get one. I want to like do the whole get the sides painted." Like, yeah. and she goes, "Can you afford the divorce?" And that <laughs> was the last we talked about. <laughs> what do 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 you rather? Y'all have an irresponsible car pick that would maybe get you uh, in trouble with your loved one. My irresponsible pick is one of those mono wheel. Uh, Boards. Oh, uh, the little. Oh, oh lord. Boards. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, 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 I put a thread out on Twitter. Everybody was like, "Don't, don't, no, nope, 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 right. nope." And then, like, one person's like, "Yeah, I don't know. Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but yeah, that's okay. where I'm at. Brad, have you got a oh I, irresponsible car pick? A totally irresponsible car. It would probably be like a one seat. You know, badass 60s 
you know, one of those that goes really fast and is completely impractical. Probably a, a Mazda Miata. Actually, you know what? I always wanted a Mazda Miata, which would there's no reason for me to have one. But I but would that love... would that is such an irresponsible pick. You would get in trouble with your loved one for yes, picking it because she's like, we can't carry anything in it. We can't go anywhere. Uh... Like, what are we doing, dude? Like a ten year old Miata is the perfect uh, 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 midlife crisis vehicle. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yep. it, it's like it costs what twenty bucks. And yep. you get to feel awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you're in a go kart. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're in a go kart. Because <laughs> you're in a go kart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Here, would you rather? Okay. A hearse, day to day, it's your daily driver. Yeah. Or a pinto. Oh, hearse. A hearse. It, you, you, get, you paint that thing white, you put the lights on top of it, some proton packs, and then everybody wants their picture <laughs> taken with you. <laughs> We, we should right. call our John Maver our friend John Maverick to ask him how his uh, hearse is, is you walking around. Out. You say, uh, ambulance, you got a chance. If it's a hearse, you got to be worse. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a dad joke. <laughs> Stolen from a movie. Ah, uh, there we go. Also, have you ever tried to? You know, get it on with someone in the back seat of a Pinto. That's not going to happen. But a hearse, mm. it would be. A hearse, you got a curtain. <laughs> hearse, you got curtains yeah. back there. Yeah, the Pinto, you might make that thing blow up. Yeah, just from rocking. <laughs> 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 the like, Pinto I, is rocking. I, 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 get the you fuck get away! Get the fuck it's going to blow away, up. No. <laughs> I would very much like to believe that I'm beyond the point where uh, the the place to get laid is in a vehicle. Uh, just me, just me. Okay. I, I mean, I wouldn't write. I wouldn't count anything out. I mean, I wouldn't personally want to. Want to? I wouldn't want to be rude. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Do you have twenty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I feel you though. You're like I'm in my forties. They just closed the fucking door to my bedroom. Yeah. Right. Let's just go to my house, for God's sake. But it but made for, it made for more fun conversation, yeah. Brian. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong, Walter. Hey, we're in Burton, Texas. There's the barbecue place. Someone's feeling frisky. We just need to pull over is all I'm saying. If we wait to you get home, wait. we'll have the meat sweats. Yeah, that's exactly go right. Now. And why waste those greasy fingers? I'm saying. <laughs> I've opened a door. I've opened a door I was not prepared to walk through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, what is one vehicle you would never, ever, ever be caught dead driving? Ooh, the new Cadillacs. What? Yeah, those things are shit. Oh. Really? Hey, I worked at GM. I can say that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you and McConaughey. Yeah. Give me a Lincoln. <laughs> uh, a Fiat. The little Fiats. Oh, but they're so much fun to drive. Mm. Right? Really? I, I haven't driven as one, so I guess don't I don't own know, it. But... As long as you don't own it, I'll drive the shit. I just don't want to own it. Yeah, I just don't want to. I didn't want to be the little guy. Beep, beep. And just, hey, take me yeah. out. I'm also on the car. Yeah. You know. Well, that's... I mean, it's Fiat is basically the Miatas before there were Miatas. Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to pick a car type. I will say I will not be caught dead driving any car that has a wrap on it. Uh, oh, so just the, the anime the, girl wrap the, the, on it. Anything sticker. the sticker design, just like no. like you know, paint job or bust. Yeah, man. like if you're gonna yeah. go, mm -hmm. go all out. Like I don't mind driving a panel van that's got a badass wizard with knights fighting and dragons yes. and tie fighter coming sure. in. That that shit. I don't know. Like, that like, shit's like painted on. You're there. saying a lot of words, but I could totally picture <laughs> see Suddenly, Robert Cargill yes. driving around being like, that's right, ultimate rider. Yeah, and if, you know, that's with right. all of your credits, your IMDb uh, oh, wrapped yeah. around oh. it. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant, I thought you meant oh. writer Dr. like Strange, <laughs> with Doctor Strange going. Right. No. I wrote this. No, he's <laughs> doing the little portal, but it's like the IGN like ten out of ten like <laughs> review. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, there are rules. There are rules about that. Oh about, really? Oh yeah. No, like there are unspoken rules about in the industry about what you can can and can't like brag about without being a douche oh. and so like your movie posters are you're allowed to put them up in your office sure but you can't put them up in the common area of your house 
Oh, it's, so, so it's four. Right. It's four. It's go great. Wrapped around you. You know car. what that tells me? <laughs> I'm a fucking douche for it. being a director of some plays, and my wife made the posters for the plays, and I've got them on no, no, my no. wall, signed by the cast. Plays, in my common plays are different than okay. movies. Okay, mm. because plays are actually they are an ephemeral thing that is in a moment yes. that existed. Uh, that cast, that there, that true. is that is sharing a moment of history. Okay. Not going, hey, check out who wrote Dr. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> check, check out the sweet ass variant poster I got as being a part of the production. Mm, All right, yes. question How bad a person would I be if I got my car to have a wrap <laughs> with a Dr. Strange logo and a bunch of like uh, 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 mm. fake signatures of every friend of the greatest writer? Right, exactly. <laughs> and around. Like, There's like, a Cargill mobile, but Brian Brushwood owns exactly. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, my friend wrote that. Not a douche! <laughs> Not a douche! <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to Carmen. <laughs> that is the sound of somebody who uh, 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 is on the edge of giving permission. Uh, but, but not <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Could I be seen riding around in it? Fuck no. no. Would you be happier knowing that that was out there in the world? No. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Um, uh, okay. What about? There's a okay. smiling no. Uh, there's a smiling no. What about like my 17 year old daughter? I'm like, listen, sweetheart. Uh, uh, it's tough to get your first car. I'll give you your first car. I'll pay for it. It's just gonna look like this. That would make me very uncomfortable. <laughs> you and her both. And he's he's not saying you can't. He's just saying he wouldn't. Uh, he would I would not that I it. would strongly prefer not. The fact that she is specifically a seventeen-year-old girl uh, kind of bothers me. What the implication of that would be? Right. Uh, because we want her to remain virginal for a long time. That, mm. No? Wow, we're going that direction. All right. Or maybe she'll be crushing cock left and right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't really understand the world these days. God, I hope your kids don't watch your show. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to the Brushwood children. It goes whichever way you want. I don't know. Are you pro or anti bumper sticker? I guess I, I don't know. I don't wow. know how we go away She's from. Not, I don't know how we walk helping. away from that. Not She's, helping. She is out there smacking the D. She is. <laughs> she has them lined up on both sides. Dick, dick, okay. dick, 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 dick. That's a lot of dicks. Right. Let's. <laughs> hey, yeah. when you know it, it's uh, fifteen till the hour. Hey, uh, what do you say we wrap things up? Uh, wrap. Maybe, maybe hold on for sixty seconds while I go get ready to All do right. that. Okay. Uh, so what is the one thing we must not, must not discuss tonight? Mr. 9-11. No promises. <laughs> I feel like I earned that one. <laughs> Mr. 9-11. I told you there's a, this, I have been on Brian's various iterations of this show for 12, 13 years now, and there are so many deep memes in chat um, that, that they just go way back. Yep. No, none of those are actually off limits. Uh, which, 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 of course, makes you like, you know, the, 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 the perfect diamond plated ultimate uh, nothing sticks to you, Teflon yes. overlord. Control room to green room, control room to green room. Yeah. Yes. We are ready to take it away. Okay. Uh, 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 take it away, control room. All right. Thank you, everybody in the green room for doing that. We'll start the show here in just a little bit. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here in the, in the great night pre-show slash green room. Uh, there we go. I'll just disconnect. There we go. Hello, everybody. We'll get started in a few moments. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing good. Ah, I've heard, uh, we heard well. Awesome. There we go. Ah, I dropped this. Oh my goodness, busy day, busy day. Hello, everybody. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, oh, yes, let's do the uh, the Birthday Borner. We've uh, added a new channel in our Discord. So that's where the Birthday Borner lives right now. I do want to give out some birthday shouts outs. Uh, ghosts, um, uh, Ghosts Mother's 66th birthday was on the 6th. Happy 66th, uh, Ghosts Mom. 
and uh, Vlad, uh, Vlad's friend Ray, had her birthday on the 12th. We'll have it on the 12th. Well, happy birthday to Ray. Uh, if you want to get some shouts outs, join the Discord. Discord.greatnight.tv is a great place to do it. Um, uh, let's see, what else is going on? Um, mm. So, uh, uh, yes, we got a great show coming up for you tonight. Uh, we gotta, we'll have Jomo. In fact, uh, uh, did Jomo make it back? He's here. Okay, I'm here. I'm here and he's here. Good. Oh, there he is. He's hidden. He's hidden. I've got too many walls. I've got a, I've got a wall of screens in front of me. Uh, very cool. So, Jomo's going to be joining us and uh, he'll play a little bit of music as well. So, that'll be fun. Um, and then, uh, I mentioned before, we'll have a, a, a riveting round of News 6. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad we bring it back. I, I really... Did wish I'd, I I I thought today. Oh man, this will be the sixth episode of Great Night. And it'll be episode six, and it'll be the new six, and there will be six topics. I missed it. A Supernova Girl says, "Tear down that wall." <laughs> well, I need I need the monitors. Uh, so Sobo says, "Nice shirt, thank you." As you know, our friend uh, Amtrekker, who was on the show a few weeks ago, uh, his uh, I got it from from nearby ATX. Their new uh, local, local shopping, uh, website platform, and, uh, that's pretty nice, pretty nice, they got a lot of different options if you've got your own, uh, uh, identity, so, uh, that's pretty cool, uh, the brand is Flaunt, I believe, but I th it's, it's one of those things where it's like, F-L-A-V-N-T, but, but then also they're not capitalized, it's like capital F and then lowercase, and, like, I think if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do the U is a V, you gotta do all caps. I think you gotta do all caps. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm maybe I'm of the uh, of the uh, DVNO. Uh, well, that's nothing. That's that's a reference to a reference that nobody's gonna get. That's that's an old Justice song about doing that exact. Uh, Cliff Singer says, I just watched I Think You Should Leave. I'm glad you didn't get it from Dan Flashes. Ooh, good, good reference. Yeah, man, I, I Think You Should Leave is so fun. It's so good. If people haven't checked that out, oh my goodness. Uh, by a round of applause, people who can hear my voice. Have you watched I Think You Should Leave? Nobody? Part of, I've heard part of. Okay, we got one half clap. All right. Wow, I'm surprised. There are, there are, there are a couple of friends. Yeah, there's a new season that just came out uh, about a month or so ago. Hasn't, hasn't seen it yet, but uh, I, I think it holds up. And I think that's the thing you would want to, you could be worried about is like, well, does it, does it hold up? How do you follow up uh, season one? And I say, you would do it like that. And it's pretty good. In fact, I, uh, I'm just, I, I finally got caught up on, uh, on the White Lotus. I was talking about this on, core, on, on weird things uh, yesterday in that I don't, I didn't know what White Lotus was. I thought it was going to be a murder mystery because the whole, it starts off with like somebody got murdered and the person that you think should be with this person is gone. Um, or if not, you they don't see, you don't see them there. Um, and so I kept watching the show going, okay, so motive and this person's got this opportunity and this person really wants to be in this room. Maybe, maybe he wants to, maybe he wants to kill somebody in there because it's, it's got a private patio. Oh, but, but that's a red herring. You don't just make it so obvious. None of that. <laughs> None of that. It's, it is, it's a, it's a very cool show, but it's, I think the difficulty is that it's very hard to describe. I think that you can't, I think it's hard to describe quickly. I guess you would call it like a a dark satire, maybe, in the vein of dark comedy. Um, but it's really about really off, really awful people. So it's, it's, it's an ensemble show about really awful people at a five-star resort. Um, and the various, the various uh, conflicts that they get themselves into. And yeah, Meryl Bar, uh, let's know, White Lotus, actually, it got renewed today for a second season, which I'd, I'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they do because... I hope it's in an, it's in like an anthology type thing where every season they kind of okay here's a new cast of the people at the place because you really can't you can't the, the characters that are there are good they're great it's cool seeing um seeing I don't know these uh, in so many words people of privilege kind of having to interact with the real world 
Uh, but I, but it's, it's, it's weird. I like, I think Brian would not like it. Brian likes shows where you like any of the characters. And there's, there, I think there's one character in the show who's very likable. I also think he's, I, my, my guess is he's going to be the one that dies. Right? Spoiler alert. I think there's one good person in the show. And I think the one person who dies is going to be that nice guy. But I don't know. I guess I don't know. I don't really know. Curtis says, that's exactly why I never finished Breaking Bad. And, 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 you know, I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge anyone who feels that way. I mean, for, for a lot of people, like, you gotta, you, 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 entertainment and media is like, especially today, is very, we, we internalize the media that we like a lot, you know? And yes, you do see, uh, I, I'm told that that is not Steve Zahn's dick. I'm told that that is a, um, a, uh, a stunt dick. I'm told that there's a stunt dick in that first episode. Spiral Shape says, have you watched Feel Good on Netflix? I watched the first season. I really like the first season. I haven't watched the second season, but uh, Feel Good's really good. That's a, It's about a, an American a comedian who's in England and is 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 is, is um, and dealing with uh, uh, sobriety and uh, uh, what's the other thing? Uh, her sobriety. And it's kind of a fish out of water story. Um, oh, and I, I think I think she's a lesbian. I've, it's been a while since I've seen it. It's not that I don't. It's that I don't remember. Not that I am unsure. Uh, but yeah, feel good was 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 cute. Um, and I would like to I'd like to get back to, to that as well. Uh, let's see. Sovereign Behemoth says Breaking Bad is the only show I've ever bought. I've never watched it again, but I feel good knowing I could. Yeah, that's interesting. Like what what is what are, what are shows? Joma, come here, 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 come here. We'll share the mic. Is there a show, is there a show where you're like, I would want to own a copy of it even if I don't use that copy? I don't use it to, like, I don't want to watch it? Like, I, I don't. Like, I, I have a, one of the only Blu-rays I own is the first Avengers movie, and okay. I think I've maybe watched it once. But I like owning it because I really liked that movie. Okay, okay. So you want to own it to own it, not necessarily to watch it over and over again. Exactly. Have you, uh, have you had anything, or do you have something that could be in I that? want to own The Big Lebowski, but I don't, but I I want to just own it. You know, right. I wish I owned it, but I, I also, I think I... I you could. I, you think it's... I bet you could find it, yeah. I don't, Even if it's I just a know. DVD. You know what, I'm going to go for it. Go for I'm gonna it. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I like to watch it. I do, I would want to watch it, but That's I think awesome I would more want to own it than watch it, you know what I mean? Yeah. To answer your question. Gotcha. I haven't seen it all that recently. It's been a couple years. But I need to, yeah. Yeah, I, I, same for me. And it's a good movie. Yeah, I don't, I, I, there are not a lot of movies I like rewatching. Yeah. I'm, I Like, I already don't like watching a lot of movies. And so it takes something, it takes a big moment for me to really want to own something. Uh, me too. It, it feels like a, kind of like a, like a relationship status. It's like next level if you own it, saying something more than just, yeah, watch that. It's like, right. now no, I've committed. internalized a like, bit of this. And we're now in this together. Like me and this movie are have something more than just that that moment. Yeah. Do you think, I, I think another movie that I would be with this for is the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie. For whatever reason, that shitty movie, I'm like so <laughs> yeah. into it. Oh yeah. Um, it, shitty movies sometimes are just <laughs> like, I, I think if, if you watch it at just the right moment in your life, you're like, it, it has a, it becomes more than it than it could be otherwise. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's not far from like fine art. I feel like people who don't understand fine art have trouble recognizing that so much of the appreciation for it is the context in which it was made. Yeah. Either the time or the, the you know the artist's life, um, and and it's tough because it's it's not always very readily available why something is important it broadly you know totally so you think do you think it, it the context of what also was happening when the watch when the viewer or the what do you call that the the art enjoyer sure the, the yeah. art the consumer the rt oh, yeah the art is when they're enjoy, when they're receiving the art doesn't their their Headspace comes into play too, right? Oh, totally. I mean that that's that individualizes it, right? Like, like Titanic for me. Yeah. Is I'm kind of into Titanic. Really? Is it a good yeah. movie? I don't think so. Oh, you don't? I don't know. Is it? I I, I was very into a, it. I was very young when it came out. I was so, I um, was at the age of like, 
Oh man, like this is yeah, this is a powerful movie. Like this is mm-hmm. powerful stuff. Looking back, I don't, I don't. It might have been silly. The whole thing might have been silly. I don't know. Talking about Suicide Squad. We're talking about Titanic. I don't, don't want to hear about Suicide Squad. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, ooh, you're gonna have to watch out for the first part of our show. <laughs> I already heard the. I already. Oh right. I heard the spoiler. <laughs> I'm trying to not think about it. I don't. I don't think that was a real spoiler. I don't remember. Uh, I guess I won't. I this won't judge good. it. Yeah, up. yeah. I yeah, won't judge it. Up. But I don't think. I think that was a joke comment that was made in our meeting earlier. Uh, hope so. Hope so. Uh, did they make? Did they ever make another two tape movie? Because I remember we watched Titanic on two VHS tapes. Oh. And I don't. Oh, you think that was that was one of the last tape? I think it would be one of the only ones where they would have done it. Really? I, I, but I don't know. I don't know. I guess. But we could find out. I bet. Okay. Someone in the chat. Do you know if if they made any other um, two VHS tape films? I don't know. It, it's yeah, Titanic. What? What else? Ga- Gandhi. Sound of Music. Gandhi. They're saying. Gan- a Gandhi movie? Did they make a Gandhi movie? Brian? Yeah, there was with uh, Ben Kingsley. Uh, yeah. Gandhi was too long for. America. I see. Fiddler on the Roof, we've also heard, is, is, is on that list as well. Mag- Magnolia, Braveheart, Godfather. Wow, there's a lot. The Stand. Well, okay, but The Stand, that's a TV. Phantom Menace so maybe, Review. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the last two VHS movie was t- Maybe that was... Because oh. all these would be before it, right? I think so. Maybe that was the final and most important two VHS it- tape m- movie that came out. That, that that I think Let's I feel more confident about saying like the last important yeah. one yeah because uh, it was such a big to do I remember it, it being was. such a big to do of uh, having two tapes yeah I see I don't remember that I, I don't remember I, I don't remember the number of tapes that's uh, that's not part of my I think it I think it had to do with computer generated you know like the graphics were next level. I was like, "What? They, it looks it's the real it's so amazing." And there's boobs in it. Whoa. And there's uh <laughs> yeah. you know, so it's there's it was fiddling. like epic. Oh, I feel like I'm, I feel like I was there. There's like a moving scene down the staircase and there's mm. fiddling. Yeah, yeah, I'm into that. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, there was a lot for me, I think. Mm. But I didn't notice the VHS. I think my only other VHS memory would be the Nickelodeon. Okay. Uh, the only other VHS uh, memory I have is that when uh, the Nickelodeon movies, they would always have the orange, the orange VHS. Or the oh, like the plastic. Tape. The plastic would yes. actually be orange. Yes. Now, that's like, that's that's one of those deep memories that's now oh, leaping the... out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, I smell it now. <laughs> yeah, I think that I, might be me. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. You remember the like, what was up with the the Disney and other VHS pack, packages being bigger and puffier than Puffy. needed to be? What I was that know. about? Maybe that was the thing for kids. Maybe like, oh well, it's you, softer for kids. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it was cheaper. Maybe it was just cheaper to use cheaper, pl- softer plastic. Maybe so. I don't know. All right. Well, thank you, Jomo. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll let you go. All right, everybody. Hello. Hello. There we go. Um, all righty. Well, let's um, let's do a final check, see where everybody's at. Brian, you good? Hey. Brian's ready. Cargo, you good? Got a thumbs up. Brett? Hello. Hello. Can, uh, talk to that mic for me. One, two, three. There he is. Say peeking in a mic. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jomo's doing good. Uh, let's see. Ready? Annalisa, good? She's good. All right. I think we're ready to do... We're ready to do the great night show. Mm. Hmm? Mm. All right, everybody. Let me click a few buttons here. Brett, I'll count you in. Right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning into the green room slash pre-show. And uh, I, I believe we here we go. All right. <laughs>